Hey guys, welcome to this video. I want to talk about linear buckling. It's the most easy form, the most easiest form of uh, doing buckling at all. But um, we can cover, I think, more complicated stuff later. So like nonlinear buckling or nonlinear analysis, which includes buckling or I don't know, imperfections, whatever. Uh, but now let's start with the easy one, linear buckling. So I will be following this tutorial here and I will point you to some resources at the end of this video. So let's get started. Um, I have now here the model loaded. It's just a simple shell model and you see um, this is one way of doing the modeling here. It would not be, I don't know really, but it could be like that, right? But this is, this is like a 2D mesh. You can see that here. But with the thickness, you can get more or less a 1D structure with a cross section more or less. So if you just switch on the, um, is it this one? No, this one. So you can see now that you have the thickness here. And this this is actually the structure which you can calculate. So I, w I was playing a little bit with that and um, also try to calculate the inertia because we want to calculate that and see what the results are and how to get to them. And so that you just get a, a little bit more of a clearer picture in your mind about what this is really doing. But um, before we do all that, let's just follow through the tutorial, see what steps are necessary to perform this linear buckling analysis. Let's go. Um, I will just turn off the 2D mesh visualization again because I think it's rather, yeah, not annoying, but it's rather uh, complicating things. So, all right, the first step we want to do is we want to create load collectors because you can see it's meshed, it has elements, components, materials, nodes, properties. You can also see in the property, if you would want to, you have the shell thickness and this is the thickness which was displayed just a moment ago. So, all right, back to it, create load collectors. So I can now create a load collector here and I will call that SPC like always and create just another one. Um, you can also open the load collector browser and right click create here. That's another thing, another way to do it. Um, and this would be the static load. So lead, not load, not lead. Okay, so we have two, two load collectors, both have no card image, and we will now fill the load uh, input here. But before that, the uh, tutorial requires us to generate a load step input. This was a load collector before, but it's now load step input. And this is just your typical idle card, uh, which takes care of how you would want to extract your buckling modes. So this is eigenvalue extraction uh, card. So you have zero at the lower frequency or lower, yeah, yeah, it's a frequency. And um, then the number of modes in this case, and this would be two, we would want to extract the, two, the first two modes. Because if you don't know what a buckling mode is, like um, if you have this bar and this can buckle in kind of different ways, it could bend like this, this would be an easy buckling mode, but it could also bend in the middle like this. And so those are different buckling shapes or modes. And um, yeah, so just that you know what this is. Okay, this is done. And now we can create the actual entities in here. So no panels for me. Um, you go to analyze this and then to boundary conditions. No, we create the force first because we are now in the load collector, the static load is marked bolt. That's the current load collector, so force select the force here and now I just love that here that you can press it and it will orientate it correctly you can just select yeah sometimes it does not work but now here you can just select the upper notes so you have that selected and we want to have the set direction and minus 10k newtons by the way unit system I checked that now it's uh, MPA in this case you have just 210 uh, thousand MPA for the Young's module, and this would be the then in newtons as well. So 10k newtons pushing down. Create that. It's tiny, so let's increase the size, um, so we can see that better. Let's make the other load collector current. Let's jump back out of this menu and go to the boundary conditions constraints. You know the drill. Uh, we go down here. 
we just select all those nodes at the bottom, see, it does not let me draw. But if I deselect here, now it works. I don't know. Tutorial tells you to deselect the four, five, six degrees of freedom, and it's not really necessary because if you just hold every node here into place that it cannot move up, down, left, right, front, center, you know, it cannot move. It could rotate, but every rotation of one of those nodes here um, would require the structure that other nodes would displace in translational degrees of freedom. So it's fine or totally fine to just um, constrain the first three translational degrees of freedom. So yeah, this is common practice. Now, now comes the time to define the load step. And actually you would want to create two load steps. The first one is just a static load step. You have done that maybe a dozen times. Right click, create load step. So you could change it to linear static, but you would not have to. You create the SPC constraint link here. You create the load link here, and that's it. So this is the linear static load, nothing special, just that. Now comes the buckling load. You create, create another load step, and this would be called buckling. And then you just, yeah, forget about that. You change, at first you change that to linear buckling. So the analysis type is nonlinear buckling. And now two fields are important. You have that stat sub buckling, which refers to a linear static subcase, the one we just created. So we can just, yeah, you know, that's and that does the same. So you can just press here and select it or go with the search option is the same thing. So we have selected load step one and method struct, what else could that be? This will be our IGRL card for load uh, mode extraction. So we select that and that's it. As easy as that. So we can run this analysis by no panels. Analysis run just here. And then we just make that something unique and run that. And now what what outputs would we get? So as you may have heard in the talk with Lukas the other day, you will get load factors because you had a load. Trick question, what is the load applied here? It's not 10K, uh, <laughs> that's so easy to miss, uh, but each one of those forces is 10K. So you have to sum that up, but yeah, just to remind you, it yeah, happens all the time that you confuse those two quantities. So it's not just 10K Newtons, but rather, I think 32 times of that. And um, yeah, so, and what, what we will get is a buckling factor. That means in, in relation to this amount of force, let's just say this is 10K Newtons. What factor should I apply that the load will buckle or lo the load will lead to buckling in the structure? Yeah, it's a little bit around the edges. But yeah, you see that in a minute. So I have done now the simulation. I can just click on results and look that up. And by the way, we could now just um, see what the calculated or analytically calculated force would be and compare that to it. But it's rather a little bit of a difficult uh, process because you calculating the inertia is a little bit complicated, but we will get to that in a minute. So results, you will see it's just a static analysis result. You could get the displacement, you could get the element stress and you can yeah just examine those. But then you have the second load step, which is the buckling load step. And here things get interesting because here you have the mode and here you see the mode load factor. So in this case, it would be 8.1 to the power of minus two. So 0 0.08 and 0 0.08 times whatever load you applied, this would be the load amount, which leads to the buckling mode displayed here. You can just show it a little bit better if you just over factorize it, the displacement, or animate it. Yeah, you can see what this is doing. Maybe also do the wireframe uh, where the structure was before, so you can see what this is doing, right? So it's it's not about the strong axis, right? Because the eye beam here would be m a much stronger uh, in terms of inertia 
uh, when bended around the x-axis rather than the y-axis as it's uh, happening here but that's that's uh yeah that's simple because it will get you the buckling nodes in ascending order that means this is the least amount of force you would have to apply to get this structure to buckle and for sure it would buckle in a way where the structure has its weak point so that makes sense now let's check that so um i created a little excel sheet which i want to show you um just nothing special but you see calculating the critical force is as easy as doing this you can look that up on a number of occasions i just looked it up here and you get for from from each um yeah I would say calculation case you have different kind of factors you would apply to because it's yeah it has just different uh, properties and the one we are calculating here is a free end that means the end is free to move and the other end is fixed and don't get confused with the degrees of freedom four five six it is also constrained here in rotation just in multiple points just that you don't confuse it and yeah, so this is that. So you had a factor of 0 0.25, and this would be the n factor here. And then you have p squared times the Young's module times the inertia. And now here, the moment of inertia, um, you can calculate that. And I try to approximate it with the shell thickness. As you saw with the display at the beginning of the video, it's not perfect. So this will not match, not really but yeah, you will, you will get a point. So here, the moment of inertia around the y-axis, so that would be this axis because it's bending around this axis. So the structure is moving to this direction. If you just see that here, uh, yeah, unfortunately here I have to do it like this. Yeah, I think you can see it like that, right? So it's bending to this side, which is exactly what this is showing to this side around y, this would be this one. So 424 millimeter to the power of four. And this would be that what I just included here. So Young's module, this one, and then you have just the length squared and the length is just 100 millimeter. I measured that from the, from the model, but in the case you don't believe me, I will just simply show that to you if I find it. So, and also, displaying the use of this beautiful measure tool. So you can just select the node up here, select, select the node down here, and you get a value. So, and also if, oh, sorry, you didn't see that. Yeah, you can just select it. Let's make that maybe with a different thing. And then I can also explain why it's so difficult to do it here. So here I just selected those two nodes and this is the measure tool, by the way. And you have 10 here, but then you have the shell thickness and the shell thickness is one, but now you cannot just simply add one in each direction because yeah, offset, whatever, you know, so it's just not that accurate. And by the way, I'm not really sure what this is doing, but you can also select the component here and compute inertia values. But as far as I understood that, that's just bonkers here. So I, I really don't get why, why it's like that. So the units seem off. Is that in meters? But then again, I'm not really sure. I ha I would have to check that a little bit deeper. Um, maybe I will do it in the future, but yeah, just that you know, there is an option to also calculate inertia values directly from Hypermesh or Hyperworks, but I did not really use it for, for this tutorial here. So we have gotten the values here. And now I calculated how much load was applied. So I had 32 loads check that really shortly again go back here no measure tool go here to loads and just select those loads yeah press l select the loads so 32 loads 32 times 10,000 times the buckling factor or the load factor in the buckling mode 1 of 0 0.08 would be 25.6 uh, k new Okay, kilonewton. All right, and if I just calculate it like that with the formula, I, I get something like um, 
21 kilonewton or 22 kilonewton. So it's close, and I think that's reasonable. Um, but just in case to be totally sure, I did another type of analysis. I want to show you, or quickly just show you, um, which is with a 1D element. So it turns out you cannot only do that with 2D elements for sure, but also you can just do a simple 1D element. And this 1D element, I just copied all the values from this tool. Right, so I just did exactly those values, put that into a beam section. So you can see that here. So you see it here. Um, yeah, it's a bit strange that you cannot pin that. So I, <laughs> thing is what I do all the time um, is I will just screenshot that and put it into my paint and then I will can check the values. But those values here, um, those values are the values corresponding to that. And if I do that analysis, so you see it's just simple one bar or beam element between that, nothing special. And with the same structure of analysis like before, you will get this result. And this result will tell you you have a buckling factor of 0 0.069. Coming back to the Excel, um, you can calculate what that would be. And this is 0 0.06, this is the buckling factor from the 1D analysis. And I just calculated this thing, same thing as with here, but with the different buckling factor. And it, as it turns out, that's matching pretty closely. So 22 kilonewtons here, 22 kilonewtons here. So um, yeah, that's newtons. All right, um, that's linear buckling, or at least my very quick take on it. Uh, with Optistruct. So you can do it with shells, with 1D, I think also with 3D solids should be no problem. I think. I don't wanna, yeah, should work. But yeah, you will see that this is just the easiest way of doing buckling. So be aware of that. There's no imperfections in here. So like, or just local buckling modes, you know? I mean, here it's obvious because the structure will buckle first with the total length, but it's not so obvious in, I don't know, when multiple rods come together. So you would have to take a lot more into account and then just this. You would have to take into account local imperfections or local modes. And this would require you to extract a lot higher number of modes than you do that with here, two modes. I mean, two no modes is just nothing. Um, but just that you get a feeling about how it is done in uh, theory in university uh, how you could apply it but also where the dangers are and where you should be a little bit more careful and also do maybe another check a non-linear run as Lukas pointed out in the last videos so i will be looking forward to doing more more of those tell me what you think tell me what you think about the analysis about um what your experiences are on that matter. If you have any questions about a spe specific topic about buckling, I could cover those as well. Uh, just, yeah, for the record, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking your time and watching this video. If you liked, please subscribe, like the video. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next time. Bye guys. Oh, I did forgot something. I'm sorry about that. I would want to point you to some valuable resources. Did I not? Yeah, so I mean, calculator, calculators like this, you find everywhere on the net, so that's not really that specific, but I wanted to point out two, yeah, two channels, more or less. The first channel here is um, The Efficient Engineer. I picked up ton of those videos, and I'm also a sponsor on Patreon for his channel. And uh, yeah, we also talked a little bit. So, awesome guy. Um, this, killer videos um the animations are just beyond earth it's really great so check it out it ha he has a good uh, video about buckling here so you can check uh, the backgrounds a little bit also different cases and what they mean and how you calculate all that and you know so there's there's a lot more about the theory in this video and then again for sure enter fea so everything with non-linear stuff i will gladly point you to to lukash because he's really the expert on, on non-linear non stuff. And so I would like to point him hard here. And definitely, we will be talking about this in the future. Can't wait. So thanks again, guys, and see you around. Bye, guys.